Welcome again to Reviews from Purgatory with J. Matt Weigand. This time around, I am reviewing Mimic. Uh, I really enjoyed this movie. I was surprised by it. And uh, let me talk about it for a while. It's, it's a horror movie you'll probably like. I, I would think so. Alright, so the basic story here is that there's a disease spread by cockroaches in New York City. And it's killing all these children. So, the scientists come up with an interesting way to kill off uh, the cockroach population of New York. Dr. Susan Tyler, played by Mira Sorvino, works with her future husband, Dr. Peter Mann, played by Jeremy Northam, and they mix the DNA of a mantid with a termite, creating this new kind of insect they call the Judas breed. Now the Judas breed is this uh, cockroach killing machine. And they unleash them into the sewers of New York and they wipe out the cockroach population. And that effectively ends the plague that is killing children in New York. Then fast forward three years to Dr. Peter Mann being called in by Josh here on a quarantine, bacterial count off the charts and all that, with some weird little church run by a Reverend Ping who's missing, and they have to deal with it, and they get the first clues of something bigger going on. They're worried that there might be um, passageways down into the subways, and this bacteria strain might get to get spread around through the subway system. Maybe a couple people got out or something. These are the first clues that start to lead them towards the subway and other clues come to his wife about strange insect and it goes on from there. So Mimic is written and directed by Guillermo del Toro infamous writer, director, producer. Um, he just wrote the screenplays for all three of the new Hobbit movies coming out. Um, wrote and directed both Hellboy movies, uh, Pan's Labyrinth wrote and directed that, The Devil's Backbone, and The Mimic, it, Mimic here is one of his first films. There he is in this behind the scenes clip. Um, and uh, that right there tells you something. I mean, someone who who's infamous for Pan's Labyrinth these days, clearly they've got some talent in writing and direction. So clearly you've got a strong script here from Guillermo del Toro and Matthew Robbins. And before I go any further, I should just say that the acting is pretty damn good. Um, Mira Sorvino, Charles S. Dutton is in here, Jeremy Northen. Josh Brolin in one of his early roles. You even have F. Murray Abraham do a cameo. So you got some strong acting here. But while the acting is pretty impressive with folks like uh, Charles S. Dutton as Leonard, the transit cop, ultimately what wowed me watching this movie again, I haven't seen this since I was a kid, is the sets and the lighting and all that kind of stuff. For some reason, this movie really had it hit it dead on with all that. In, in fact, I'm so impressed, I have to throw up this extra list of credits real quick. See? Yeah, these folks, the kind who don't usually get that much credit or remembered that well, usually. So, sets are beautiful. They're really detailed and well-made. I kept thinking that most of these subway sets and sewer sets must have all just been, um, you know, sets that they made as opposed to filming on location. But it does say in IMDb that they used a, a lower platform disused in um, Toronto, the Bay subway station. But a lot of it has to be sets. Sets that they took a lot of effort to build and design and you have great lighting in them. And it adds to the atmosphere of this. 
atmosphere is a huge part of horror and these sets are perfect I love that one there um, you get great lighting like that with them and you you go yeah this is this works the detail in each little set is just <laughs> kind of too much like you think how long did they set up these sets did it take weeks months a year some of them are really spectacular and I just freak out about them so I have to show you these pictures here of them you know uh, I hope they're not too dark all right now while I still show set shots because I just don't want to give away too much about the villains of the story um, I would like to say also that there is a good mix of CGI and puppetry. They didn't want to just do CGI. They did both practical effects and CGI. So that makes it more real. When you actually use an actual thing instead of just CGI, it shows up as a real thing. I don't want to show any of those insects because it would be an attack scene or something. It would spoil something in the movie. But that too is really great really impressive work on all of the creature effects and so on. So since the CGI is pretty limited, you really start thinking that these bugs could be real. That there's an authenticity to them. They do a real good job with these creature effects. Now one more thing, as I show you a little bit of the intro, which was a very nice splashy way to begin this movie. Um, the soundtrack is really good too and as I've said before any good horror movie can become really great by a strong soundtrack and this one certainly has a soundtrack that aids it you know so uh, it's one more little thing one more thing that it's me talking about instead of the acting and so on you know and the sets the lighting the camera work the soundtrack it's all really top-notch and for some reason that really impressed me this time around so as I head to the close here I, I kinda wanna do some miscellaneous things but first I wanna talk about fear in this movie so it's certainly a horror movie and it did a good use of uh, CGI and puppetry if you do too much CGI you get like the thing prequel and it's just terrible so uh, traditional special effects really help in horror particularly. They, they help make it feel very real. Now, and I also went on to talk about the sets a lot and yeah, it's got good atmosphere because of sets like that and good lighting and all that. And certainly Del Toro played on people's primordial fear of insects. Uh, people are disgusted by insects to a good degree and he plays on that perfectly here. And it's an interesting thing to talk about, but I really enjoyed this thing he did about having no limitation. And by that I mean, often in horror movies, if there are kids, they're not going to be killed. All right? That's why all the slasher flicks, they're teenagers. They're not kids. They're teenagers. Kids are off the table when it comes to being killed off in a horror movie and Del Toro he's willing to let them get killed off and that really makes you think anyone could get killed off in this movie anyone there's no limit there and that really adds to the fear um what else well there was a scene where some characters got separated, and usually when that happens in horror movies, it's really terrible. It worked here. Some scaffolding collapsed. Anyway, usually when characters get separated, it's like, oh, of course, they got separated. They decided to go there, and they decided to go there, and now they're going to be picked off. Here it worked. It made sense. It felt natural. And that's, that's something. Created a lot of tension over time, built it up, and again, you, you really didn't know who would get killed off. The characters were very expendable. Even though they were being well developed, I mean, people who were key supporting characters could get killed off. And you go, yeah, everything's off, everything's on the table here.
no limitation, and that's really good. Uh, there were some kind of jump scares, but I don't think they were really irritating in this movie. It, it worked, ultimately. And um, that's pretty much the bottom line, and let's get to the ratings, and I think that's it. So I gave it a 2 on Blood and Gore. What I mean is that uh, most of the shots, when they are getting killed, they're kind of um, out of frame. You know, the killing is out of frame. It's like focused on their face or something. Or it's uh, zoomed out or whatever. So uh, the deaths aren't really that graphic and bloody. But they're still terrifying. And that gets to the next point. Is it scary? Absolutely. you got a strong element of fear. It builds up a bunch of tension. There's a lot of really tense moments where you're like, oh, oh, is this it for them? Oh, maybe? No? No? Yes, in this case. Huh? Anyway, and of course, it, it it's one to even kill off children, so you really have no idea who's going to survive this thing. Very good at fear. Not as good as um, Halloween, but good. All right, now, I feel a little weird giving it an 8. Um, a lot of people panned this movie. But I really liked it, and you gotta go if you got. You gotta rate it as you see it, you know? If someone hated Casablanca, then I guess that's kind of their opinion. You could argue with them a while about it, but eh. I really like this movie. I think it's worth seeing. I think it's very impressive. And, you know, maybe the acting's a little weak in some places, and the storyline could have some holes you could point out, but the whole thing with these bugs and so on, just don't overthink it. It's it's a good horror movie, and I think you should check it out. So this movie played on people's fear of insects. And a lot of people are afraid of insects, or for that matter, arachnids. Um, so this is as good as time as I need to ask, what are you afraid of? I don't really know what I fear. Um, I'm not afraid of heights particularly, uh, nor am I afraid of public speaking, though I suppose claustrophobia to some degree. Not severe, but, you know, I wouldn't want to go spelunking in one of those caves where you crawl around on your belly through the whole thing. No, that would creep me out. These are some reviews I have in the works. And then after that there is a message, just sort of what direction I'm going with these reviews. and what we're going to be talking about. And, um, well, that's pretty much it for this time. Once again, um, thanks for checking out Reviews from Purgatory. I hope to have another review for you pretty soon. One last point. Um, Netflix has this on streaming, so check it out online if you want.